Jerry, we talk now about the big one, the Champions League. It's the competition that has virtually overtaken international football as well, apart from maybe the World Cup and the European Championship. But certainly international games are left in the shadow, I feel, of the Champions League. And we can't start without talking about Messi. On half a leg, he comes on, he scares the life for the Paris Saint-Germain, they get the result and they're into the last four again. Not surprised. Um, spoke about it on Spanish football a week before the actual game when I knew he had a hamstring injury and, and they were talking about whether he was going to be fit or not and he, he was trying to get fit. I, I actually said best thing to do is put him on the bench. He'll put the fear of God up. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain actually known he's on the bench and if they needed him for 10 or 15 minutes he's the man to do the business and that's the way it was a bit disappointed with Barcelona though without him because the week before that I thought Cesc Fabregas had a great game scored a hat-trick his first ever hat-trick in, uh, in football for himself and he played he took the mantle of Messi on really well and played brilliant um, but on the night against Paris Saint-Germain I think it was maybe nerves pressure got to them and they didn't play particularly well until Messi came on but having him uh, on the subs bench to come on what what a weapon to use and uh, deservedly through as I thought they would be best player in the world Messi without a doubt Iniesta Xavi <coughs> in the top five six players in the world for me as well interesting too that, that Messi they say you know and you would know more about it, they say that Messi is a very quick healer that you know if he gets injured he, he does heal very quickly which it clearly showed in that one he does um, he's not that injured that often he gets kicked every match funny enough He's a strong little man, you know, at five foot seven. He's very, very solid. He's very strong. He's just got this passion about football. He wants to play all the time. They've rested him now. He, did, he wasn't even in the squad at the weekend when they won 3 0. And um, basically, they're resting him ahead of the Champions League because that's the only one they have to go for now because um, obviously they've won the league more or less. They only need a few more points and, and the league will be wrapped up. So they're, they're conserving all his energy for the Champions League semi final two leg, which will be brilliant. What a game, Jerry. Bayern Munich against Barcelona. I suppose Bayern Munich and many people are, are, are tipped by many to win it. The, the, the plus factor for the likes of Barcelona is at least that they have the second leg at home, which at this stage of the competition and the way the, the, the competition is set up is certainly a, a bonus, isn't it? It is. I've said that before. The team that's got the mm. second leg at home knows what they've got to do. And we talked about um, Barcelona and Milan and, you know, 2-0 down from the first leg. You know, I think they learned a big lesson there and, and they went out and scored a couple of goals against Paris Saint-Germain. Again, controversy over, over offside goals and we saw that in the Malaga game. I have a lot of sympathy for Malaga. Two offside goals that were allowed by the officials and uh, Borussia Dortmund Scottish have gone through. Officials. Scottish officials. Like their football, <laughs> poor enough. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's not helped Malaga's cause and uh, first time in the competition, have a little soft spot for them, you know, on another day, they probably would have been in the semi-final against all the odds. But, you know, we've got the two the two big names from Germany and the two big names from Spain, and they've kept them apart. It could be an all-German final, it could be an all-Spanish final, it could be one of each. You know, it's still up there to, to be uh, examined. Bayern Munich are a great team. They have some fantastic players as well, too. Barcelona, of course, would be accused of depending too much on Messi, but it's, it's going to be so close, but yet at the same time, my tip would be that Barcelona would actually end up going through in the tie. If they play as a team, you know, and that's that's one of the problems. They've had loads of problems at the back with Puyol this season, and then Mascherano had to be rested, and they've had Piquet's had injuries, you know, and they actually played Adriano, who's a five foot seven, five foot eight full back come midfield player. They played him at centre half against Paris Saint Germain, which I thought was crazy, but they got away with it because of Messi. And the style of football they play, they keep possession. It's it's making sure that the possession is turned into chances and they, create, they, they convert the chances. I still fancy Barcelona, but it's going to be a really tough match. And Jerry, the first leg, would you fancy uh, Bayern to win that first leg? Would you fancy a draw? What, you know, what way do you see that working out? I actually think Bayern will win it, but I think they'll win it by two goals to one, something like that. And I, I think the fact that Barcelona have scored away from home could be the big plus. Now at home, in front of their home crowd and 98,500 fans in the new camp, that's going to be something else and they'll know exactly what they have to do. And I can't see how they're going to stop Messi. I just can't see. Uh, Iniesta, I can't see how they're going to stop Iniesta and Messi. Even with the quality players they've got, and they have got quality players, all international footballers. We've talked about Arkin Robin. We've talked about uh, Mario Götze. We've talked about you know the, the quality they've got with Dieter Müller and uh, Schweinsteiger. They, they've got a fantastic array of players, but I just think that overall... Barcelona know what they're doing. There's more pressure on Bayern Munich and a fancy Barcelona to go through and play Real Madrid 
in the final. Well, here we are now. We're going to move on to that one. Uh, Wembley Stadium, of course, is, is uh, the, the showpiece venue for that final, which is going to be fantastic. And the uh, second tie, Borussia Dortmund, fortunate. They didn't play well now, and they were lucky to get through against Malaga. We know by all the controversy there. But they're at home to Real Madrid, which again suits Madrid the second leg at home. It does. Now, but the other thing, people will point to the qualifiers and say, Bar- Borussia Dortmund beat Real Madrid in the qualifiers at home and drew with them away from home and I did the match I did both the matches and Borussia Dortmund were brilliant in both games and in the first half of the Bernabeu they were outstanding and it was only in the last 20 minutes that Real Madrid really got at them but it's a different team now this Real Madrid team's different they've got more solidarity they've got they're all playing for each other again which is what they did last year when they were playing really well and won the league title um, Mourinho's master tactician at getting it all right on the day I'm telling you now, they're going to score goals against Borussia Dortmund. I think um, they could even they could even draw in Dortmund or even win in Dortmund. You know, Ronaldo, he's just past the the, the 50 goal mark uh, at the mm. weekend. He scored twice at the weekend, and the first one was a free kick, which was sensational from 25 yards. The second one was a bullet header back across goals. He can score all sorts of goals, but he's got Di Maria playing well. He's got Benzema, Higuain, all playing well. Mesut Özil. And at the back, you've got this young lad, uh, Rafael Varane. You've got Sergio Ramos, who are really solid. And they swapped the goalkeepers over. That's his plan. He's brought in Diego Lopez. He's left Casillas on the bench, who's Spain's number one. And all of the other players are thinking, if you can drop Casillas, my place isn't safe here. So they're all. that's one of the reasons they're playing so well. The other rest you say, my place isn't safe here. If it all goes belly up for him, but his, safe, his place won't be safe in Real Madrid. Because you say the players are playing... It strikes me as if the players are playing for themselves and not for Mourinho. Mourinho wouldn't be... Uh, he's certainly not the flavour of the month in Madrid, is he? He's not the flavour of the month a month ago, but this month is a different month. And, he, <laughs> he, and he's that type of person. He's up one minute, he's down the next, and he, he's on a roller coaster ride, and he loves it. He loves dealing with it. He's a master at this. Um, I've watched him pull off some real stunts, and he, he's got away with it every single time. He's won the Champions League in three different countries. He's going to make it four. I'm actually fancying them to beat Bar- uh, uh, Borussia Dortmund. And I would fancy them in the final against Barcelona as well. Well, I'll tell you what, that'll be for another day, Jerry. We'll have to get down <laughs> to talk about the finest of this. But it would be some final, no matter who makes it, you know. The Champions League is very, very special, you know what I mean? I, I think I'll probably go with you. I think Barcelona and Real Madrid will be there. being all Spanish affair in Wembley. And what an occasion that'll be. But two fantastic uh, semi-finals to look forward to both their Europa League and of course the Irish Cup as well Jerry thanks as always you're welcome Logie